I would call this um, yep. February 15th meeting of the Paducah Planning and Zoning Commission to order and welcome all of you. Would you please stand with us as we say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Mr. Summer, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Benberry, Mr. Bradford? Here. Mr. Morrison? Here. Mr. Schramke? Here. Mr. Shade? Here. Mr. Wade? Chair Cresilius? Here. Mr. Morrison, you have the minutes? Me, uh, minutes. Yes, ma'am. I move that the reading of the minutes for February 1st, 2016 be waived and that the minutes of said meeting as prepared by the secretary be approved as written. Second. Second by Bradford. Are there any corrections? Call the roll, please. Mr. Morrison? Aye. Ms. Schramke? Aye. Mr. Shadel? Aye. Mr. Bradford? Aye. Chair Cresilius? Aye. Mr. Shadel, you have the first item of business? <coughs> yes. I move the resolution entitled the resolution constituting the final report of the Paducah Planning Commission on the proposed amendment to a development plan for property located at 4965 Village Square Drive, Suite C, be adopted. Second. Second by Schramke. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone who would like to speak? Mr. I spoke to Mr. Walker, the sign contract, earlier today, and he was going to try to make it, but apparently he got held up. He's with Signco, is the, the contractor for this. Um, but this is an Edward Jones investment firm going into a small office center back behind Concord School. Uh, it is lighted. 16.66 square feet is the total. 20% uh, of the uh, the tenant facade, which is suite C, would be 100.8 square feet, so it's much smaller than than the 20%. Is there any comments? Call the roll, please. Mr. Shadel? Aye. Mr. Bradford? Aye. Mr. Morrison? Aye. Ms. Schramke? Aye. Chair Cresilius? Aye. Ms. Schramke, you have the next item of business. I move that this commission recommend approval to the Board of Adjustment regarding the application of Laminin Holdings LLC for a conditional use permit to expand the vehicle sales business onto the lot at 3034 Park Avenue. I further move that the following conditions be forwarded to the Board of Adjustments to be placed on the property. Provide a dry drive aisle between both lots. Since the Park Avenue ingress egress is not proposed to be used, it should be removed. If the Levin Avenue ingress egress is not to be used, it should be removed as well. Provide stormwater management as needed. Second. Second by Morrison. Hmm. Mike, do you want to elaborate on anything? Hmm. On the preliminary site plan that you have, I guess what, Lisa, about a year and a half ago or so, we did the first one on this where Perkins Autoplex is. Um, that's to the right of the, on the right side, it's, we came down here and we asked for a conditional use permit as well on that, and that's where Perkins Motorplex is located today. It's where the old, um, uh, what was it, what building was that? Moose Lodge. The Moose Lodge. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Moose Lodge, he converted into this building for his offices. Uh, he renovated the whole thing. All he's doing now, he's purchased this lot to the left, uh, as you see, where we've got proposed asphalt parking. And it used to have an old, old house there and a garage and some parking there, and he's tore all that down. It was just about ready to fall down. It was boarded up, and he's taken that down, and he's, he's cleared the lot. And what he wants to do is, and when the final product is before the city, 
this parking lot that's in front where he has his vehicles parked now for show, it'll just go all the way across, all the way over to the next street, uh, Levin Avenue. Uh, you, you won't notice the difference because they're all going to be just the same piece. And that's what he's done. He owns all the land in behind him as well. Uh, but he's only going to ask, we're only asking for a conditional use on the part where you see from the purple line on your plat up, which is the part that's zoned B1. Uh, everything that's zoned R4, as was before, won't be in this conditional use. We've run some rough calculations over the stormwater. We should be able to accommodate everything uh, inside where we're going to be using because it had a lot of impervious area previously. Uh, with the house there, it was a large house, a garage, and gravel. So there's very little uh, increase in impervious area, but what increase there is, we'll be able to handle it inside this particular piece and not have to get in the back part. So, he, question so I, he owns everything in back of where he is presently. He does. He owns back of the property. He's he in. does. He owns all that. Uh, my question is, uh, Josh, there's four conditions that are on this uh, I didn't hear the first one. I rec recommendations and, and my question is uh, these are obviously from staff that they are mm -hmm. requesting that these be included uh, and the owner is he receptive to these changes you have to read uh, them back to me I for instance the either. ingress egress on Park Avenue that won't be uh, used should be removed you're talking about the entrance off Park Avenue the ingress egress that uh, is not to is not proposed to be used. We think it should be removed. Staff is suggesting it should be removed. Yeah, that's it's, something that actually has to be, since this is a state road, we'd have to get, uh, he's not going to use it as an entrance at all. He's not. Uh, but we'd have to get approval from the state on that to be able to make it. Because I, I think, you know, that it it should be removed if it's not going to be used. Yeah, and I don't I think he wants to use what it his, as, uh, he wants to use one main entrance, and that's the one you see in the middle of the property. The one, the one that currently exists. Yes, yes. He's not going to use the other. Was the other one is ingress yeah. and egress at all? No, the aisle between both lots. That makes sense. I, you know. Yeah, well, he'll do there's that. A problem there. Um, but the uh, ingress egress. My only, our only thoughts were, you know, we don't know what will happen in the future, and we hated to uh, ask to remove it from the state because the, it is difficult to get entrances from the state. Um, so we don't mind that you all putting that as a condition. We don't have any plans, but we didn't want to make formal requests to the state just, you know, because we don't know what's going to happen in the future. Well, when we like to keep that <coughs> access in the When we say remove it, what are we actually saying? Are we saying change it? To yep. where it's not. Restore it to grass and sidewalk. Grass and that sidewalk. Occurs. Yeah, that's okay. You could, uh, could you do that without requesting that it be closed by the state? Yeah. Oh, you can't. I think what we were planning on doing was just putting a barrier up so that no one could come. Like, um, he was going to park a vehicle over on it. Oh. Where nobody, in other words, as you see vehicles parked there for sale, he was going to park one probably inside of it. Uh, and just keep it that way and always keep one there where you couldn't use it. And we may even put some curbing where you can't use it. But he didn't really want to get into the um, encroachment permit with the state. That's pretty costly. And you never know, 20 years down the road, I mean, he, he, he might have to have it. So it, it's, it was permitted by the state for this lot, and we he really... He's not going to use it, but he didn't really, really want to have to go through the permit process with the state to, to get it taken out. That's something that has to be taken care of for this conditional use. I guess we can go with it, but I know the owner would preferably like to, like to let it stay there. Well, as I read this proposal, it includes removing it. Mm -hmm. So if, if we approve requesting, it will be that it we just an, an idea it could be slightly reworded to say since the park avenue ingress egress is not proposed to be used it should be removed upon request of the engineering department since they're going to be the ones that'll have that say over that end of it okay yeah, that'd be fine okay right now i'm sorry tell me again um just at the end of that 
second sen sentence uh, just add upon it should be removed upon the um, request. request of the engineering department of the city of the city engineer? E yes because Rick Brooke and Angie will be the one to determine I think Rick's from standard. here just to just to briefly put it when you when you take put an entrance in or take it out you have to post a bond with the state and it's like ten thousand dollars and you have to draw up a full set of plans whether you're putting one in or taking one out you have to locate it show them what you're what you've got and then show that you're going to take it out and then what you're going to restore the type of grass you're going to put in how you're going to get rid of the culvert there what grades are going to be there uh, it's a major process uh, it's costly to do that uh, and it just it just be easier to close it and leave it open in case he ever wanted it open again uh, rather than have to be out thousands of dollars just to close it through the state that's the only thing he's not going to use it right now but I again he doesn't know what he's going to do 20 years down the road and it is pretty costly to get a permit from the state it's also pretty hard to get an entrance permit on highway 60 when you get them they're like having gold uh, so it's kind of just i hate to get rid of it just just for the time being i guess i don't understand why you could not retain the curb cut but at the same time remove the asphalt and substitute grass the curb cut would still be there available for you to use that would not have changed but it seems like if you were changing you know if that would be like a compromise where you did not have to file with the state but at the same time you were actually making a change to the property just the property to show that that was not going to be used currently. Does that make sense? It makes common sense, but that's not the way the state looks at it. Okay. So any adjustment in the curb? Yeah, any they... adjustment out there, that curb's gonna have to be changed. And they're gonna require him to break it apart. But they'll right. allow a car to be parked on it? Yeah, yeah, they would do. Or they'll allow a barricade to be up? Yeah, if we did it on, if we did it alongside the right of way line, we could do that. And that's what he's got in mind. Uh, if we take that asphalt out, the, the state's not going to let him keep that curb in there. They're going to make him take it out and then also put a curb that's similar to what's in where the drainage is. It's that's, not a permanent structure, a car. I mean, you couldn't put a permanent structure out there. So it's pretty costly. It's several thousand dollars. The $10,000 uh, that he would probably have to put out for the... Uh, bond i mean it is probably about that costly to do that uh, it's just a it's, it is a big burden on the, on the owner to take it out that's the only problem and if he ever puts it back in of course he's got to go through the same process sure, of course put it back in where would the uh the car set exactly it would set just right in front it wouldn't set inside the right of way of the park avenue it would just sit right in front where we've got actually you see where the little stripes are in front of there he would just keep the the parking right in front of there at the whole time where you couldn't in between the two grassy areas is that what you were talking about on well, the asphalt or hard to, where you see the parking and you see the striping that's going perpendicular with highway 60 sure yes he would keep those full where nobody could ever pull in and he also would probably put some kind of concrete barrier there where nobody could ever pull out mm -hmm. that's what he's doing over on the other side he's only using one entrance over on the other side as well he doesn't want anybody coming in and coming right. out. Right. Well, in. that's right. what I'm concerned about is, yeah. you know, if it's not blocked, people will think it's an entrance and right. the, the other turn into it. You he know. had, I mean, it was never brought up when we got the conditional use on the part that's existing now. He just keeps his trucks or cars parked right in front of it where it can't be used. That's the way it's all. about concrete posts as a permanent barrier type thing? He could do that, and that's far cheaper than spending ten thousand dollars that i mean you keep put it on his own property it wouldn't be on the state's property sure right i like that yeah. better that that way you can still remove them if you need you know if you ever wanted to sure. use that curb cut and they're not i think you'd be more receptive to that the concrete posts would satisfy me if 
Mm -hmm. <coughs> can we amend the recommendations then? We can. Um, well, and then going on to the other part need, of the oh, ingress. We must well go on, yes, to the next. <laughs> I was going to say, what about Levin Avenue? Yeah, I'm getting there, too. I know. <laughs> you know I'm next. Now that's a, that is a city, city street. street. I was going to say, that's not a be up highway. The engineering department to decide that. Okay, and that I think should He's say. He's not going to use it right now, but uh, yeah, that it, one it's I a very small entrance as it is. It's really a real small entrance at the where the house was. It was kind of one of those where they came in off Park Avenue and then just Mm -hmm. a, a three. It was gravel anyway. Yeah. About to what the engineering department says it's on very, very small. Levin Avenue. It's not one of those where you can come in and out. It's purely one vehicle like yeah. a driveway to a residential house because that's what was there. Now, whatever the city wants to do on that, I mean, he was just going to again park like he's got where you can't use it. But, I mean, whatever the city engineers want to do on that, well, he'll have to abide by that. One thing I did want to mention is not, uh, they, um, the owner, Tim, did not just buy the property at foreclosure, but it was a foreclosure sale initiated by the city of Paducah because of the deterioration of that building. Yes. And a lot, I, I think, tax liens and mm -hmm. citation liens. So I, I think his development and his purchase has been a huge benefit to him. Of course. Well, I agree. No doubt about that. I agree. <laughs> Welcome. I thought I'd point that out. I didn't know if you all knew that. Or not. What were the other conditions? That, I know the stormwater were. Stormwater management. Mm -hmm. A detention area must be shown on a final site yes, plan. It will be. Okay. There'll probably be a separate plan as well, too, because it's, it's pretty detailed. So they'll probably be shown on here as well as a separate plan with calculations. And you're going to show a drive aisle between that first item, correct? You mean, the, yeah, well, we can show that. I don't really know. I mean, he's actually going to, he's parking over there, but see, he's got a vinyl fence up there, and that's, if you see the note, that's going to be removed uh, and then put back along the other zone line for... Uh, well, that was going to be part of my question, too. Um, I know that he's going to put vinyl fencing all along that back right. lot line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is uh, Currently, it comes down part of the side, and that was because of the um, property that was there previously. Does he intend to put any down the side that would have taken care of that existing gravel prop, you know, entrance uh, problem? Um, I just didn't know if he planned to do any of that or not. No, the only place, what he's going to do is take down the vinyl fence that's up from Park Avenue that separates these two properties. Right. Take it completely down where the asphalt will just be, I mean, you won't ever know the difference. It's just going to be continuous asphalt. And then he's going to relocate to that to the back of the adjoining property, right. correct? Right. Even though he owns that, he's still going to put it up, yeah. But I don't think he wants to run in along 11 Avenue. Well, that was my question, yeah. whether he wanted to do that or not. Well, I think for site purposes, and I, there isn't anything cur anything over on that no. side. No. It was just a question I had okay. because he had done that. And I knew it was I don't because think of so, the properties. Visibility, I He'll would need think the visibility he, for his sales, I'm yeah. sure. 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 And there isn't any. And what, I think that is also B1, is it not, up front? Uh, yeah, on the other side of the street it is. There is an apartment, a multi-family There is. Room, but it's towards the back. back. I had looked at it <clears> today. <throat> so just for my benefit, how will it read now? Just, um, just an idea for both points, three and four. Yes, sir. Since the Park Avenue ingress egress is not proposed to be used, it should be removed upon the request of the engineering department. And if the Levin Avenue ingress egress is not going to be used, it should be removed as well upon the request of the engineering department. Does that leave well, <laughs> everyone with enough flexibility to do what we were talking about? Maybe we were talking in about the concrete pipes. Palms? Where is that going to go in? Would y'all like it to go? <laughs> well, on the Park Avenue side, for right. sure. 
um, because that solves that problem. I think probably the um, access off of Levin Avenue is not going to be that crucial. Right. But on the highway, that could get to be a problem. So. I think the post you mentioned. There was some kind of curbing as well where you, where you couldn't go over it. Uh, it could be either concrete or asphalt curbing. Can we ask that it maybe not be removed, but ask that, um, um, that that structures be placed so that it cannot be used as an entrance? I'm sorry, I don't think I understand what you're saying. But rather than saying that the entrance has to be removed at the request of the engineering department, could it be uh, that it be, I guess, um, that the entrance that it be blocked? open but blocked? Uh, as long as not being used as an access. Okay. Well, then that gets it back to parking a car in front of it. You know what I mean? Um, I think we're looking for something a little bit more. How that blocked with concrete posts? So, something like that or with some type of appropriate barrier. How about that? With an appropriate barrier. That will leave you yeah. some flexibility. Okay. And Rick can say how like uh -huh. would you be. I, did, I know he didn't want to have like you see on construction like on interstates where they have right no those orange th no no I'm not those not those uh -uh. Um, yeah. concrete posts that you can't drive through something yeah, i understand what you're saying mm -hmm. just so that you know w safety is the only concern here that's all but at the same time i can certainly see where you don't need to be paying ten thousand dollars to close an entrance if you're going to possibly uh, okay miss Grisius, i i've wrote a a new sentence here uh, that states curbing or other suitable barricade shall be placed so that the entrance shall not be utilized. Does that work for you all? Mm -hmm. It does. Curbing? Okay. That sounds that's better. Good. Yeah. Sounds better. That gives you some flexibility. Okay. Is that just Park Avenue? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's all. I don't, yeah, the Levin Avenue one, I don't, I don't see as being a huge problem, to tell you the okay. truth. Especially if they plan to park cars over there. It won't be There'll be cars parked, trucks parked. Mm -hmm. uh, but you said curbing <laughs> and not posts? Uh, curbing or other no, civil barriers, how I yeah, put that on there. If they, have the, if they have posts up, they may not, they'll not have to drive them around on the street to get the cars in and out of that. They're going to do that anyway. You can't use that thing to get the cars in and out of that. It, it's not meant to be it's, it's, used as an entry. We want it to not be used. Yeah, but I mean, like he's talking about placing the vehicle there. No, no not if there's a concrete there post, anymore. he's not going to put a vehicle there. <laughs> I wouldn't think. Once they put a barrier, you won't have to put a vehicle there, I don't think. Are you right. talking about Park Avenue? Yes. I, I think it's okay. a concrete post. I think that uh, curbing are concrete posts. You know, whatever engineering tells them they can do, I'm sure is what... You know, I had that wrote down the first time. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> sounds better when I say it. How about that, Josh? <laughs> <laughs> I've got <laughs> curbing or concrete posts shall be utilized or shall be placed okay. so that the entrance shall not be utilized. That's great. Okay. All right. There you are. Does that work for you all? I think it does. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just enough flexibility where you don't have to get involved with the state. Yeah. Thank you. We appreciate your consideration. Try to help you out as best we can. Okay. Are there any other comments? I think we have. Do, do we need to vote on the amendment? Uh, yeah. Amendment? We'll we'll need to vote uh, to amend the motion. I would entertain a motion to amend the motion. Then. So moved. Second. Shramke and Shadle. So now we're voting to amend the motion. Is that clear? Are you ready? Yes. Okay. This is the vote to amend. Uh, Ms. Shramke. Aye. Mr. Shadle. Aye. Mr. Bradford. Abstain. Aye. Mr. Morrison. Aye. Chair Cresilius. Aye. Okay. We, we have amended the motion. Now let's vote for the motion. Or, or against the motion, whichever you prefer. All right. Uh, Ms. Schramke? Aye. Mr. Shadle? Aye. Mr. Bradford? Abstain. Mr. Morrison? Aye. Chair Cresilius? Aye. If there is no other business to come before the commission tonight, we stand adjourned.
Thanks. You're welcome.